I've got a microphonic pickup. Hello. Just dropped into the studio is this from Poly Effects. This is Ample, an amp and cab simulator with a difference. But before we go over what makes it different, if it's not already clear, let's hear what it sounds like. But I think the sounds coming out of the ample are absolutely brilliant. However, this is one of the hardest videos I've ever had to make because it's also extremely complicated and there's lots of sub menus and things that I usually hate. However, I enjoy the sounds so much that I definitely think this is a piece of gear that is worth persevering with. And we'll talk about that more at the re in the end, the bum end of the video. Let's go over some features and specs. So the Ample has 56 classic amps inside, each with a matching cab that can be turned off if you want, but you cannot switch one amp's cab to another amp. So for example, you can only play the Fender Twin through the Fender Twin cab. You can't put the Fender Twin through a Marshall JCM800 cab. You might wonder where the switches are. Well, they're right in front of you. They're touch responsive LED sliders and everything is a touch responsive LED thing. There's even some hidden stuff going on. And then of course you have these two foot switches. So let's talk about these first. A will engage the boost if you tap it like that. However, if you hold it down, it will cycle through the different amp types which are listed across the top. Clean, Crunch, Destroy, Classic USA, Classic UK, and Gen X. As for foot switch B, that turns the pedal on and off, as in engaging it or disengaging it from your signal chain, holding that down will cycle through the presets within that amp selection. Or if you continue to hold it down, it will actually go up to the next amp and then through those presets. This is super useful if you are changing things at a gig or something and you don't wanna be bending down and messing with these sliders, which I must say are immense fun and very responsive. Apparently you can tap them as well, but there's that's not as responsive as sliding it. So they are designed to be sli slid. Ample can be run in stereo or mono, which is summed, and I'm currently running in stereo with different amps on each ear. However, if you want to sum it and put it through a mono cab, you can do that just by pressing that three times. And press it again, and it'll go back to stereo. I know, it, it, it's mind-blowing. I forgot earlier, there are actually eight bass amps as well, so um, I was just doing the guitar ones. Sorry, bass players. Right, this is the menu you should see, or the, the layout you should see as normal. And in this, you're adjusting gain, volume, bass, and treble. I'm on crunch one, and if I press one again, I get a different menu. And this time, the gain responds to LED luminance, so how bright the LEDs are. And I like it about there. Um, could have it a bit brighter, actually. There we go. And then we've got volume, which is actually the level of boost, which don't forget is your A foot switch. Then bass becomes mids and treble becomes the amount of room reverb you have on that preset. To get back to the regular menu, you press one again. Now, if you're thinking that is super complicated, I agree with you, but we'll talk about it in the review section. Finally, this has got MIDI in and MIDI out in the form of the TRS on the back and USB-C so you can update the firmware. In this video, even though it's got stereo in and stereo out, I'm gonna be going mono in because I'm gonna put pedals before it in a bit and some pedals after it later on, which therefore might be mono out. Everything you heard so far is stereo out with a different amp on each side, and that's going directly into my audio interface. So I'm not silly enough to think that you have time to listen to all 56 amps within the Ample. I'm just gonna give you my favorites, and they're gonna be the same amp on each side. So you just hear one amp in these next examples. Uh, 
Earlier on, I was monitoring through these Yamaha musicians' headphones, by the way. I'm now monitoring through this barefaced cab, and everything in the room sounds absolutely brilliant. Um, I'm so excited about how good this sounds. I'm not sure about when I dug in. I'm not sure if the cab was, um, was a little bit too loud, because it is super loud in here, which is probably why I'm shouting. But I'm going to go over something a bit rocky now, and I'm going to use this Ibanez Iceman, the IC420. Now I'm on number four of Crunch, which means it's the Victory Sheriff 44. That sounds great. I've got a Victory Sheriff 25 up there, and it's there's so many sounds in the Victory Sheriff 25 and all these amps, of course. And these uh, the the ample is is capturing those amps. I remember that sheriff sounding a little bit like that. So it's Marshall, but but made by Victory and upgrade up, update updated. Right. Um. I want to go for destroy. Oh. This one is the Diesel VH2, which is number three on Destroy. And I've got it turned off at the moment because it's quite noisy. There's no noise gate. That's insane fun. Um, that's just thick. I don't know if it sounds great to you, but in the room, that is absolutely insane. Uh, I like the VH4, the amp, and I've never played a VH2, but um, just looking at it, yeah, that sounds great. I have to show that to my friend Steve, who's got a, a VH2, a VH4. Right, on to what's next? Classic USA, all the amps that are classically American. For this one, I've chosen number six, which is the 1971 Twin Reverb. And bear in mind that even though I've got reverb, uh, reverb effect on here, this is not the reverb from the amp. This is the reverb from PolyEffects Verb. Right, it sounds like this. <laughs> stick with the strap because there's some Marshall stuff in the classic UK. So, so let's go for the JTM 45, which is number seven. That sounds great. That might be my favorite amp so far. Um, is it the JTM 45? It's it's just beautiful. It's it's full, and I was a bit unimpressed with the with the Fender um, Twin Reverb. It didn't sound sparkly enough. But that that is a gorgeous sound. Wow. Okay. Um, Gen X. <laughs> That sounds great fun. I really hope it's coming across on whatever device you're listening to, hopefully headphones because of the stereo stuff at the beginning of the video. But in here, through that cab, it sounds not like a real amp, but like a recorded version of a real amp. So yeah, the sort of tones you want to hear through a PA system or into an audio interface. There's a little bit of adjusting to, the, well, there's a lot of dynamics, but there's adjusting to uh, playing to something like this, an amp simulator. And if you have an amp simulator of some other brand, or even maybe you've got one of these, you'll know that when you play an amp sim, it isn't exactly the same as a real amp in the room. 
there's a difference in tone. It's it's a recorded version of that, so it's a lot more hi-fi. But the dynamics and the touch sensitivity and the feel, the relationship between the the fingers and the sound that's coming out, is really nice. There's it's it's do it's behaving like a real amp, but it doesn't quite sound like a real amp. But I wasn't really expecting that. Let's play some bass. See if that sounds like a real a bass amp. Let's just turn it off for a moment. That's the Fender Bassman, the 1958. Love it. Of course, I want to test how Ample deals with pedals, and I know that PolyFX have had Ample at a few booths recently at some shows, so um, I'm guessing quite well, and the best test for me is to put one of my favorite fuzzes through it with a guitar that I know well. So let's try the Op Amp Big Muff through that Marshall that I played earlier. I thought it was fantastic, the JTM45. That is in Classic UK, and it's number seven. There we go. Here it is without the muff. <laughs> And then with Muff. <laughs> um, it feeds it's flipping loud. It feeds back like a real monster. It sounds great with the op amp big muff. Uh, yeah, there's a bit more gain on the Marshall this time around. Uh, I don't know what I did there. I think it sounds fantastic. Um, let's try some big old reverbs after the ample. The reverb is the verbs also from Poly Effects, and it's one of my favorite reverb pedals ever. And that's going ample into verbs and into my audio interface. I'm monitoring it through that still. It sounds mind blowing. More pedals? Yeah. Yeah, let's try something bluesy. I've got a Fender amp up on here. This is the Fender 1956 Vibralux. <laughs> Quite poppy and snappy. Now let's uh, let's put the blue notes through that. That's a reverb for good measure. I'm sold on that sound. Uh, it sounds beautiful. The blue note is one of my favorite drives of the moment. 
and uh, Ample is dealing with it nicely. Uh, it, the Blue Note j actually sounds pretty good on its own, like just into a mixing desk, but then add it with an amp sim and one of this caliber, beautiful. So there's obviously much more on board with this. I'm not gonna dive into the MIDI in this video because if you're into MIDI, you'll figure it out for yourself, but just know that you can control everything with those TRS cables around on the back. I wanna round up this review and let you know if I think you should buy it or not because I've been using this for about two weeks. And in those two weeks, I've had quite a relationship with this. I've gone from being confused by it to being in, uh, oh, frustrated with it to hating it, to coming around, to absolutely loving it. And we've had some firmware updates in those times. So I've got a pre-release version because it's being released on the day that I'm putting this video live. And there's still gonna be firmware updates in the future because I've also noticed a few little um, tweaks that could be made, shall we say. And the number one tweak I would say is that volumes of certain amps are super loud and then volumes of other amps are acceptable. So you really gotta be careful when changing um, presets. And I'm hoping that Loki at Poly, Poly Effects has taken a look at this and has released yet another firmware update because he's super cool at doing that. And he was very cool at listening to some of us who were making videos and giving him feedback. So yes, there's been some back and forth between the people that are making videos that you've seen released and, um, and Loki at Poly Effects, which is only a good thing because he went and redesigned a few things and I think he's turned an okay amp sim into a fantastic amp sim but it needs still just a little bit of tweaking. And in fact, playing with this, I made a bit of a pros and cons list that I'd like to share with you. It's on my phone. Okay, con, learning curve is quite steep. And at first, my goodness, um, just knowing what's going on in those sub menus and pressing things and not getting it to react as you want it to, that is tough. And from and it doesn't have a screen, you know? So that's very uh, unusual for most people, I would say. The pro is that once you get inside it, and it doesn't take that long, especially when it responds as it should, you know, with these firmware updates, you are, you are rewarded with amazing sounds and great functionality, but not too much functionality. And if you're gonna go into MIDI as well, this is one of the best amp sims I've heard in certain places, okay? There are some amps that I don't think are good at all, um, but because that's opinion-based, I'm not gonna mention which ones, and there are some amps which I think, definitely through that and through those headphones, they sound glorious, and they were an absolute joy to play through. Okay, um, I, guess, I, guess, I guess a con for the secondary features, like when you, um, when you press that, come on, there you go, um, I, you could have had, um, other labels down here, like so that at the moment now treble is actually doing reverb. So it could have had treble slash reverb and bass slash mid, which might have been more confusing, I guess. But for me, um, if I'm using it and I don't know the pedal and maybe I'm using it live and I've forgotten, you need those secondary options. All right, there's gonna be a bit, quite a bit of talking in this bit, uh, which leads me on to this is not, uh, so, oh, sorry, the pro for that is the fact that the pedal is actually quite small. That Blue Note is a fairly small pedal. It's smaller than a Boss Compact, and this is not much bigger, and there's a lot more going on than there is in that. Something I wanted to test, let's put a drop or two of water on there and see what happens. When I say drop or two, I really do mean a drop or two. I'm gonna get wet water all over the floor. Right, there it is. There's water here. It still works. So. My finger is wet. I don't know how well it's coming across on camera, but there's a big old drop just there and it's still working. It's not like a phone. And this was a pretty important test and it's passed with flying colors. Sorry, Grogu, but um, your, your bum is now a pedal dryer cleaner. There you go, go down there, buddy. There, lovely and dry again now. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, the startup time. This is not great. It's not terrible, but if I just unplug that, like that, you then have to wait a moment because if I plug the power straight back in, it doesn't start up properly. It gets stuck in this cycle of colored lights. So it takes about 10 seconds, which I guess, because there's a computer in there, it's the same as a computer. It's, it's losing all the information that you've just put into it. So I think that's enough time now. There we go. Now, it does this beautiful uh, little, little startup screen, which I love, that the Verbs does it as well. But that's great. There, 
that was that was quite a long time. Um, I don't know how long that was. I'll, I'll put that on screen while that was in, in real time. But that's it. There are a few quirks about it. It's hard to get into at first, but you're rewarded by having a huge choice of amp simulations and cab simulations. And the sounds of most of them are, it is absolutely fantastic. It's I'd say it's better than most of the digital stuff I've worked with. So if, you, if you're using a modeler at the moment or or not even just a modeler, but something like, um, I, I'm trying not to name certain names, but but multi-effects that also do amp sims in them, I would take this over those. And I'll probably come back and do a shootout at some point because I need to find out which is the best amp sim. And um, so far, this is hard to beat. Links to Poly Effects, Ample, and all the rest of the pedals will be underneath this video. And if you've enjoyed this, it sparked some joy maybe, give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.